Steve Jobs once said that it's impossible to connect the dots looking forward. You can only do so looking back. But it gets a little bit easier if you are able to learn from somebody else's path, especially if they're standing in front of you holding a flashlight. Hi, everyone. My name is Sean. I'm a director of engineering at a company called Coursera. In my role, I lead six product engineering teams who are helping us grow the business and push the boundaries on product innovation. Like many of you, my journey started at PICT several years ago when I was an electronics and telecommunications student here. And if I'm being completely candid with you, my journey is not all that special. I'm pretty sure it's repeatable. So today, I'm going to share some common sense tips with all of you. Hold a symbolic flashlight, if you will. My hope is that anybody who's looking to pursue a career in tech or tech leadership is able to follow this simple playbook and build a decent trajectory for themselves. Of course, my hope is that a lot of you do a lot better than that and have your own unique stories to share, which I'll fondly listen to at some point. So the first tip that I want to share with all of you is you don't know the future. Just trust the process. I'll share a story from my early days at PICT. See, for the most part, I was an average student, but I decided to pour my heart and soul into my final year capstone project. I was lucky enough to find a rock star mentor, and under his guidance, I decided to build a low-cost touchscreen device along with my project partner. Now, mind you, this was before iPhones and iPads even existed. So here we were, two final year electronic students said, we are going to build this tablet. We're going to distribute it to students in classrooms where anybody would be able to avail help from the internet at their fingertips. Um, only problem was that we had no idea where to begin. So we started by reading hundreds of pages long data sheets. We even learn some CAD design software. We wrote to some chip companies, asking them to send us their free samples, because we had very limited money. It was astonishing that many of these companies actually ended up sending us their samples. That year, we won the first prize in INC, which is a national level project competition. The story is not about that first prize. It's about what happened after. You know, after graduating from PICT, I decided to go to the US and pursue my master's. Whereas my project partner and my mentor decided to start a company. Their idea was to automate the placement process in engineering colleges. I still had about five months before I had to leave for the US, so I volunteered to help them build the product. Now, being from electronics background, I didn't know how to build web applications. So back to the grind again. I learned Ruby on Rails. I read a couple of books on Ruby. I even learned, uh, used some online resources, reached out to several alumni and asked them for help. I still remember this one story where I reached out to alumni and he asked me a simple question. He's like, hey, what's your deployment strategy? And at that time, I had no idea. I said something like, oh, we'll use GitHub for, as a source version control system and said, Oh my god, you don't know what deployment is, do you? That whole five-month period was filled with embarrassing stories like this. But we learned a lot. We worked hard. And at the end of those five months, we developed the product. I even pitched it to several colleges in Pune, and everybody loved it. Now, fast forward one, one and a half years, I was in the US. I was applying for internships. I would have sent out at least 100 applications and I could not get even one company to reply to me. So there I was, having won a national level project competition. I had a 3.9 GPA, and I could not even get a company to respond to my applications. Now, if there are any early stage, early career folks in the audience today, I'm sure you know what that feels like given the job market that we are in right now. But I continued sending applications, and then one company responded to me. It was a three-people startup who was looking for an intern who knew Ruby on Rails. 
I had no idea that five months stint with my old BE project partner would help me to land my first internship, which got converted into a full-time job. My visa got sponsored. The lesson here, you cannot predict the future. Just do what's in front of you with a positive attitude. Don't overthink outcomes. Just trust the process. Now, before I come to my second tip, I want to ask the audience, has anybody seen the movie Laksh? So Laksh is this cool movie where Hrithik Roshan in his glorious six-pack abs helps us to win the Kargil War by helping us capture a strategically important peak. Now, Hrithik is obviously the protagonist in the movie, but in my opinion, there's another MVP who, is his, who was his girlfriend's dad. See, at the start of the movie, the dad gives Hrithik a profound piece of advice. He says, Beta, zindagi mein bhale hi ghas kaatne wala bano, but achha to koi matlab hai. So that's my second tip. No matter what you do, put your heart into it and make sure you do your best. See, by definition, you cannot do better than that. But anything less is intellectual dishonesty with yourself. Often at work, or even outside of work, when I talk to people, I hear this common complaint that my work is very boring. My manager does not give me interesting work. It may be a contrarian opinion, but I strongly believe that there's no such thing as a boring job. Now, no matter what you do, make sure that you're going deep and make sure you're understanding your subject well. When I was very young, I had this book of quotes. And there was this one quote in that book I loved, so much so that I still remember it 35 years later. It said, the very first step towards success in any field is to have interest in it. There's this common fallacy that sometimes in companies we are waiting around for interesting work to come to us. We somehow believe that the work that we already have is not worth doing. Do not adopt this mindset because it's not going to serve you very well. We have this saying in our engineering department. They say that leave the system better than you found it. I would say adopt that mindset instead. Because no matter what your domain, no matter how narrow, make sure you understand the subject well. And then make sure you understand it so well that you're in a unique position to improve upon the status quo. Because that's how you're going to build trust. That's how you're going to demonstrate extreme ownership. And that's how you're going to land bigger and better opportunities for yourself. Just strive to achieve mastery all the time. And speaking of achieving mastery, I'll come to my third and final point. It's one of the values of my company, and it's three simple words, learn, change, and grow. In 2016, I had co-founded a company, but the company was not doing very well. The CEO of the company had suddenly left. I had significant financial obligations, and I had the responsibility of a team that I had hired. So I was finding myself in a position where I knew nothing about running a company, and I had to find solution to all these grave problems very quickly. So I, I had to learn a lot of new skills. I learned how to generate leads for my company. I learned how to pitch my company to prospective clients. It's needless to say, I made a lot of blunders while doing all this. But through that field experience, I learned that Angular and Python were some of the skills which were in demand. So I learned these new skills. I trained my entire team to do so. We pivoted to doing some consulting work, got some cash flow flowing, and then stabilized the company. See, we are living in this information age right now, and especially with AI tools like ChatGPT or agents. The difference between knowing and not knowing something is just your intent and the time you're willing to invest in it. Honestly, I feel like I'm back in school right now. The technological landscape is literally changing every week. 
you know, the rate of learning has to match the rate of change. AI is part of almost every one of my workflows right now, whether it's writing interview feedback or brainstorming on the right format for having a large meeting, or even using AI as a thought partner when I have to make some key decisions. AI is everywhere. Now, if you're not investing a few hours every week learning some of these new technologies, unfortunately, you're on a path to becoming obsolete within the next few years. Anyway, back at my company, I was learning a lot of things. I was trying a lot of new things. You know, some of them worked, but many of them didn't. So I knew I needed to change my approach. So I reached out to an old manager of mine, and I asked him for help. And he ended up putting a lot of trust in me. He helped me to land my first big contract. That led to more clients. You know, through those clients, I found some new mentors. And these mentors literally changed my life. Everything which has happened since then was shaped due to that brief period in 2016. You know, it's a well-known secret, but not nearly leveraged as much as it should be. That everyone in this world wants to help you. It makes them feel great about themselves. So in most cases, I'm not saying in all cases, but in most cases, your job is not to convince somebody to help you. Your job is to just make it easy for them. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you want to ask me for an introduction to someone. You just draft a message and tell me who you want me to send it to. All I should have to do is hit send. You want me to help you take an important decision? Come to me with two of your best researched options and I'll help you take that decision. This process of learning, trying new things, asking for help, and updating your approach, this is everything. The goal should be to improve all the time. And see, none of us are perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But if you're lucky, and if you've done some things right, you're going to have some people in your life who would be willing to give you constructive feedback when you make these mistakes. Make sure you take that feedback well. Because that feedback, that's gold. Often I see people get defensive, people question the right intent, or even attack the person who is giving them feedback. I might have done it more times than I wish to admit. But it's critical that you be conscious when you're doing this and avoid doing it in future. See, somebody had the choice to sit on the sidelines and silently watch you fail. But instead, they put themselves out there. They decided to share some feedback with you. They said something which was awkward even for them to say it. You know, that feedback, now that you have it, you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to build trust. You have an opportunity to show that you're committed in investing in your own growth. So make sure you f accept that feedback graciously because that feedback is an act of kindness and generosity on the part of the person who is giving it to you. Accept that feedback, reflect on it, and make sure you use it to fuel your personal growth. As I come towards the end of my talk, I want to leave all of you with one final thought. See, all these things are great, and I'm sure you're going to maximize your chances for success. But success is not a straight path. It's a winding, curving road with a lot of potholes, U-turns, and dead ends. So in your pursuit for success and happiness, just please be kind to yourselves. You're going to fail, and that's OK. Because failure is not an opposite of success. It's a key ingredient. The most important thing to do is to trust the process do your best and learn, change, and grow continuously. Thank you so much.